feeling trapped in an emotional roller coaster when you have strong feelings for a guy who goes from investing heavily in you to doing the bare minimum not to lose you is beyond painful. Partly because you feel attached to him and have projected a future together, but partly because deep in your heart, you know you deserve better, but feel scared or even terrified to lose the connection. So today I'm going to show you the number one thing you need to do if you're caught up in this drama to reclaim your worth and be treated with respect, pursuit, and consistency. So the first thing I'd like to say, if you're caught up in this drama, is that the biggest impediment that you will face in moving forward is going to be your feelings of shame around it. Let me clarify what this means. I've had the blessing of helping highly intelligent women throughout my career, and I'm talking PhD therapists who should know better, doctors and lawyers and C-level executives and scientists who are highly intelligent, and they still go through this experience of being attached to someone who is barely validating them or giving them hot and cold energy. So don't feel crazy. Don't feel like there's anything wrong with you. It's not your intelligence or your true worthiness that's affecting this. This is a misplaced expression of your projections into a guy and it can change. So once you understand that despite you being super intelligent or beautiful or awesome, you could be going through this, then the next logical expression of this is acceptance. If you don't accept this is happening, you will not be able to move forward. And what I'm going to share right now is three reasons why this happens. So if there's any level of inadequacy or there's something wrong with me or shame, you can pull those down a little bit and start moving forward and make a big difference in your life. So the first reason why this happens is because you're subconsciously projecting an idea about the future because you have a strong sense of longing for a relationship and your own feelings of worthiness into a human being. You are thinking erroneously that this guy is your ticket to getting what you want or that your worthiness is in some way determined by his level of attention, his level of connection, him wanting to be with you. So if that's subconsciously taking place, the next logical step is that you don't want to disconnect from him. Second reason why this happens is because regardless of how smart you are, this experience is highly emotional and highly biological in the sense that there's going to be explosions of the heart taking place. There's going to be hormonal changes. There's going to be storms of sorts taking place in your nervous system that make it far less likely for you to logically say this isn't working when you're feeling something so intense, when you're feeling so attracted, when you're feeling at times so validated, and when you're feeling so afraid of not having the situation happening, then that intensity is part of the reason why you can move forward or set a boundary. So again, if you've been saying to yourself that there's something wrong with you, there's something happening inside that is making it highly unlikely that logic will be the thing that helps you change this. The third reason why this happens is because there's something called variable reinforcement, meaning when training an animal, and in this case, a human being, which is also an animal, you don't have a very consistent schedule of reward, but you have uh, every now and then high reward, your nervous system craves that reward even more. So if this guy were never connecting with you, never asking you out, never telling you you're beautiful, more likely than not, you would say, I'm out. There's probability that you would still be there, but it's less likely. But what happens is this guy every now and then comes in, shares his magic, his light, you get super excited, and then he goes away. So your nervous system has been trained to crave that stimulus again and again, and it's becoming in some ways an addictive sort of experience. Now that you understand this, here's the number one thing that must happen for you to move on, not just from the situation with this guy, but for not experiencing this again in your life. You must be willing to make the committed decision that this shitty experience no longer works for you. You're not sure yet how you're gonna change it, but you're committed to changing it. You're committed to not experiencing this again, you're committing to telling yourself the truth and you're committing to drawing a line in the sand where this type of experience where a guy is giving you the bare minimum or playing hot and cold is something that is beyond what you accept in your life. Now, I'm going to share with you right now what are five practical steps that you can step into that will help you navigate this murky waters and get you through the other side. The first thing is the decision 
that your epic love story, the story that you've been telling yourself since you perhaps were a, a girl or a teenager, is not dependent on this dude. You can experience the love you want irrespective of this guy. Your brain might be trying to convince you that he's the best specimen of a human being you've ever connected with, or no one understands you the way he does, or that he's the smartest, coolest, best looking, most intelligent. Whatever BS your brain is telling you right now, don't believe it. What I'm here to say is not that this guy isn't special in some way, but that there's guys who will have specialty and specialness, but also be willing to pursue you and move forward. So once you make the decision that this guy is one of four billion men, granted he might be special in some way, but there's other special guys out there, then you start losing the fear of him being the one, because the one doesn't exist. There's multiple the ones, and you'll choose the best fit for you based on what you both want. Number two is you need to start practicing what I call 1% more courage. 1% more courage means that you may not know how to set the boundary that you need to set. You may not know how to stop accepting shit from guys. But what you're willing to do is, if what you used to do before is put your head under the sand and tell yourself it's not happening, one degree more courage means that as it's happening, you now tell yourself, I don't like this experience. Maybe that's 1% for you. If you already tell yourself, I don't like this experience, maybe 1% more courage means you're going to write it down so you can do something about it. Maybe if you already wrote it down, the next 1% for you might be to say, I don't like what's going on right now. You will take one degree of extra courage, action, accountability, uh, expression every single day as you move forward. Now, before I go into my last three steps, if you're a single woman watching this, I'd be willing to bet if you're not fully aware of the number one real reason, root cause reason why you're still single. So what I've done is I've taken 13 years of helping women in every continent, every walk of life, every kind of love challenge you can imagine, helping them to experience the love they've craved for a lifetime, and put it in a single quiz you can take in about 60 seconds that will reveal to you the number one reason you're still single. If you want to participate and get your answer, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description. You will see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions, and in 60 seconds, you'll have the answer to the question why you're still single as well as a custom report that's going to share with you based on your specific blind spot, what is the number one thing you can do starting today to reverse this trend and attract the relationship you want in a fraction of the time. Step number three is you need to take some time away from this guy, away from this drama, to sit down quietly and from the depth of your heart, write in a piece of paper, in broad strokes, what do you want? What is the type of relationship you want? What's the type of connection you want? What's the type of frequency of communication you want? What is the type of uh, emotional intelligence you're seeking? What is the level of pursuit you're seeking? What do you want to give and what do you want to receive? Because right now, you've probably started going from what you really want to what you think you can get. And that's not exciting and that doesn't create joy in life. So go back to redefine what you want and compare and contrast the experience you're getting or the shitty experience you're getting with what you really want and figure out how big that gap is. The next step, number four, is you need to make a committed decision that you'd be willing to walk away if you can't reach a level of pursuit and a level of connection and a level of respect and a level of consistency that meets your heart's needs. I'm not talking about crazy guy talking to you 20 times a day and taking you on a honeymoon every month. I'm talking about a guy who shows up, who knows what he wants, who's willing to connect with you, who's willing to ask you out, who's willing to answer your text messages in a relatively decent amount of time. I'm not talking immediately, but I'm also not talking weeks later. Once you are willing to walk away, then you're ready for the next step. And the next step is have the conversation. Have the conversation with man in question where you're willing to express in your own unique way what are you looking for and what's needed going forward. And it would sound something like this. And again, you need to put this in your own words, but this would be an example. Imagine you're connecting with a guy called John and you're saying, John, I, I need to talk to you. I'd love to have a conversation with you. When you actually find time, don't, don't just blitter it on him. Make sure that he's open to connecting with you. Say, John, I want to share a few things. First off, I think you're an awesome guy for this reason, this reason, and this reason. When I've connected with you at times, I feel, fill in the blank. How do you feel when you connect with him, when he's validating, when he's connected, when he's conscious, when he's pursuing? At the same time, I feel confused because at times, fill in the blank. <laughs> At times I feel like I don't know where, what's going on. I feel like you're very distant. I feel like there's hot and cold coming from you. And I don't want to put pressure on you to act in any specific way if it's not in your heart to express yourself that way. At the same time, here's where you set the boundary. 
here's what no longer works for me. I'm looking for a guy who's doing pursuit and who's connecting with me, who's really investing in getting to know me, connecting with you when I don't hear from you for, for weeks on end, or when you don't have time at all to connect with me, or when you never want to talk or rarely want to talk is something that makes me feel unwanted, unseen, and I don't want to put that pressure on you at the same time that no longer works for me. So here are a couple of options. I would love to continue connecting with you if you're willing to, again, fill in the blank. If What are the specific actions you're asking him to step into if he wants to continue connecting with you? What are the things you want him to change? And if that works for you, great. If it doesn't work for you, with all the pain in my heart, because I think you're a great guy, I need to move on. And then allow him to share what he's willing to do, not do, or change. Here's the beauty of this whole thing. If he changes and steps up, you win. If he changes and self-disqualifies and steps down, you win because you're no longer wasting time. What's not going to happen is this ambiguous elephant taking a crap in the living room that everyone can see and smell but no one's addressing. You need to address it head on, not make him wrong for it, not demand things that he's not willing to do. At the same time saying, here's what I need going forward. Let me know if you are in or if you're out. Hope this is helpful and useful. And if it is, it would be the world to me and to my channel because this is the way I get to grow and reach more women. If you click like and subscribe to my channel, and if you'd like to continue learning how you can attract the guy you want without the need for gimmicks, manipulation games, or stupid techniques, make sure to watch the next video right here.